Hello and thank you all for coming to tonight's conversation. I'd like to begin by inviting Uncle Charles Madden to, to the stage to officially welcome to country. Good evening, folks. My name is Charles Madden, but known around me in the city of Sydney as Chicka. Now, that's a nickname that I got many, many years ago going to Redfern Public School, which is now NCIE, the National Centre for Indigenous Excellence. Folks, I'm from Gadigal land, Aboriginal land. That's the land we're on at the moment. For many, many years, I've lived and worked around the city of Sydney. I've been involved with many different Aboriginal organisations over the years. I've been a director with the Aboriginal Medical Service at Redfern for over 40 years. Also a director with the Redfern Aboriginal Housing Company Aboriginal Hostels Australia and the Metropolitan Local Aboriginal Land Council, where I am still a very active member. Folks, for many, many years I've lived and worked around the city of Sydney. I'd like to take this opportunity this afternoon to extend a warm and sincere welcome to any of my Aboriginal brothers and sisters, non-Aboriginal brothers and sisters, we have any brothers and sisters here from the Torres Strait or further afar across the seas, welcome. Welcome to Gadigal land. The Gadigal clan is one of 29 that makes up the Eora Nation. The Eora Nation is bordered by three distinctive landmarks. We have the Orkesbury River to the north, and the Peen to the west and the Georges River to the south. Those three rivers form the boundaries of the Eora Nation. Folks, if you've travelled across this great city of ours today, the state or this great country, walk from afar, welcome. Welcome to Gadigal land. Enjoy your stay. Have a safe and trouble-free trip home. Once again, welcome. 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 Thank you. Enjoy the evening, folks. Thank you, Uncle Chica, for that very warm welcome. Both Kylie and I would like to acknowledge the Gadigal people who are traditional custodians of this land. We also pay our respects to elders past, present, and emerging of the Eora Nation and extend that respect to other Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people that are present. My name's Bella Napier and I represent MAD here in Sydney. MAD is a global not-for-profit organization headquartered in Denmark that brings together the cooking community to inspire change in the way that we eat. MAD was founded by Chef René Redzepi of Restaurant Noma in 2011 and is best known for a symposium held under a big red circus tent on Copenhagen's harbour. The symposium brings together chefs, servers, engages them in problem solving alongside academics, farmers, politicians, students and journalists. But not everyone can get to Copenhagen for a symposium and that's where MAD Mondays come in. MAD Mondays is an event series that's accessible to MAD's local audiences, especially restaurant staff, so named because it convenes on the traditional day of rest for restaurants. Tonight is our first Mad Monday in Sydney and we'll be holding one more this year here at Carriageworks on July 16. Noma and Mad were first here for a three month restaurant pop up in 2016, a day of talks called Mad Sydney at the Opera House in that same visit and a tour of Australia we supported for mushroom farmer Cheeto Guevara last year. We're thrilled to be back in Sydney, piloting two Mad Mondays here at Carriageworks this year thanks to generous contributions from CarriageWorks and from Kylie. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Kylie Kwong. Uh, I'm of Billy Kwong Restaurant in Potts Point, Sydney. When I first encountered uh, Noma and Rene Redzepi's Scandinavian food, what really struck with me was his unique approach to cooking. His commitment to a cuisine grounded in time and place would become a very big part of what inspired me to celebrate my Chinese heritage and native ingredients in a new way in my cooking. Since I saw Rene speak at the Opera House in 2010, I have participated in Mad Sydney, a Mad Symposium and Mad Yale, uh, a collaboration between Mad and Yale University. 
Over the last eight years, MAD has prompted me to ask many important questions of myself as a chef and a restaurateur. What is the role of the chef today? What sort of a chef am I? What sort of a chef do I want to be? How much of what we do is about others? How much of what we do is about ourselves? What is our true motivation? As you know, being in the business of hospitality is all about sharing and generosity. Working for social change seems to be an, an organic extension of this. And my staff and I are constantly asking ourselves how we can be most effective in helping to bring about positive social change. Two of the greatest lessons I learnt during my time at Mad Yale were A, that as chefs we have the ability to become the instruments and lifeline through which our cultural heritage and biodiversity can be preserved, and B, that to, take tru to truly take care of ourselves and in order to be of the greatest benefit to others, we must be connected to and engaged with a community. We are here to uh, tonight to discuss Indigenous Australian foodways, the rich cultures, stories, traditions and history that are embedded in this ancient land. As you may already know, this is an area that I am extremely passionate about and I truly hope that you, our amazing and caring food community, enjoy this conversation and that you leave feeling informed, inspired and ready for further action. Just before we get started, I would like to invite Lisa Haviler, my great friend and the visionary director of Carriage Works, to say a few words. When the opportunity arose to work with Lisa and her crew to bring MAD to Sydney, I was absolutely thrilled. Lisa makes everything happen. Without her unstinting support and commitment, none of this would have been possible. Thank you, Lisa, and over to you. Kylie, thank you, Bella, and thank you, Uncle Chica, for your very warm welcome. We are absolutely thrilled to be working with our much-loved ambassador and fearless leader, Kylie Kwong, and MAD for the Australian premiere of MAD Mondays in Australia. The discussion tonight is focused on Indigenous foodways, and there is no better place in Australia to be discussing this than here in Redfern, a central Sydney suburb known to many as the black capital of Australia. The indigenous significance of Redfern has long been acknowledged as a place of change, resistance, resilience and refuge, and the birthplace of black activism in this country. This building that we're in tonight has, since 1890, been the place that train carriages were made, and over 6,000 people worked here every day. This was the first place in New South Wales that Indigenous people were paid on an equal basis. And this was the place that many new migrants coming into Australia got their first job. It is these histories that we honour and carry forward in everything that we do here at Carriage Works. And tonight, the inaugural Mad Monday is critically important part of continuing to make contemporary Indigenous culture visible and central to our lives. Thank you, Kylie. Thank you, Bella. We hope that this is the beginning of a long and great partnership with what is already a very highly regarded international program. Thank you. Caroline is the author of Only, a singular memoir, a candid account of family, secrets, tragedy, forgiveness, and food. She's contributed to two non-fiction anthologies, My Mother, My Father on Losing a Parent and Rebellious Daughters. In 2015, Caroline was awarded the Hazel Rowley Fellowship. In 2018, she became the inaugural reader in residence at the State Library of New South Wales. Caroline's career highlights include two years working at Time Life Books on the Good Cook series of books with Richard Olney. She has written about food for Gourmet Traveller and other national publications and is a keen home cook. Caroline also writes about books, culture, and aspects of contemporary life for the Sydney Morning Herald, The Guardian, and other media, and she joins us here from her home of the South Coast. Thank you, Caroline. Thank you. 
Thank you, Bella, and welcome, everybody. And thank you for your welcome to country, Uncle Chica. Tonight, we are going to hear from four people who are committed to change and to opening our eyes to new ways of thinking that helps us to think about how we integrate better knowledge and practice around indigenous foodways and Aboriginal ownership of land and what grows in it and on it. Before we get started, I want to acknowledge that this conversation, while being the first Mad Monday, exists in a continuum, a dialogue that many other voices have initiated or contributed to over the years. They include pioneers who really were ahead of their time, like Jean-Paul Bruneteau at Ryberies and Raymond and Janice Kirsch of Edna's Table, both ventures very, very far ahead of their time in Sydney. Many chefs have built on their work, including, for example, Adelaide Young Gun Jock Zonfrillo, who is part of the Noma family. These days, you only have to look at a menu or open a cookbook, whether you are eating Shea Peter Gilmore or cooking from Maggie Beer, and indigenous ingredients are at last in our awareness and on our plates as never before. But everyone approaches this differently with varying degrees of awareness and emphasis, and that's what gives the food community its individuality, its dynamism, and its diversity. I also want to acknowledge the immensely valuable work that award-winning Australian food writer John Newton, who I hope is here somewhere with us tonight, but it's too dark for me to see. Yes, you're waving, John. Um, John is the author, as I'm sure many of you know, of The Oldest Foods on Earth, which presents us with invaluable information about traditional foods and their usage, but also articulates the unique opportunity these foods present to us right now and he has some great ideas about how to move forward, and I'm gonna be referencing those later. Maybe, maybe you'll join in the conversation at that point. I hope so, John. Also, an important reference is um, distinguished Tasmanian writer Bruce Pascoe's book, Dark Emu, in telling us about Aboriginal farming practices and dispelling many of the myths that have endured to this day, which have prevented us from knowing just how brilliantly Aboriginal civilization managed this land for thousands of years and as a result enjoyed a rich and varied diet. And also, by the way, Dark Emu is about to become a dance work staged by Bangara and I can't wait to see how that company interprets its agricultural heritage. When Dr. David Scrimger, the founding doctor of the Pintupi Homelands Health Service, watched the last Pintupi people walk out of the desert in 1984, he said that they were, quote, the most healthy people I have ever seen. They were literally glowing with health, not an ounce of superfluous fat. They were extremely fit. And that's another big reason to embrace indigenous foods. Their health potential marries so well with their environmental and flavor credentials. They are, as John points out in his book, our own superfoods right on our doorstep. There definitely is a new consciousness out there and cause for cautious optimism. Millennials, we are told, are the generation that are willing to pay more for items that they, when they know where they have been sourced or produced. Um, and, and they have a particular concern about the ethics of uh, sourcing and production. We see this with coffee, we see it with chocolate, we see it with clothing, to give just a few examples. And so while at the moment, when you look at the state of the world, hope is hard to come by on many fronts, perhaps we can feel encouraged by the values of a new generation. Before we hear from our guests tonight about aspects of indigenous culture and stewardship, I just want to add a few words of um, introduction after, after Bella's kind words. I usually do this kind of thing, this kind of event at writers' festivals, not food industry gatherings. But I am here representing, if you like, the consumer. I'm the early adopter who likes trying new ingredients. I'm curious about provenance, and I enjoy talking to growers at farmer's markets, like the fabulous one here on Saturday mornings. I want indigenous foods to be part of my life because this is where I live, 
on what always was and always will be Aboriginal land. And on that note, I just want to say a special welcome tonight to the five chefs who are with us this evening from the Indigenous Culinary Institute. That is a fabulous thing to have you here. Okay, <laughs> yes, let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> I would now like to invite our four speakers to join me on the stage. So please make your way to the stage now.